So thank, thank you guys for giving us another 10 minutes of, of concentration. Um, this is part two of our uh, presentation, which is going to be done in 10 minutes. And we have a, a world-class moderator to lead it. And basically, to lead it and to time it. Uh, and the impetus of this was, you know, Ash started this company just over 10 years ago. Um, people who know him and follow him know him. And he's very vocal and very opinionated. He's learned a lot of things that we thought could be condensed. So what we're, we're and that's, that's the hard part. Are you saying I have a big mouth? <laughs> So, so, uh, so this is the 10 most important things we've learned in 10 years in YouTube in 10 minutes. All right, take it away. Yay. All right. This is why I have an Apple Watch. Um, so number 10, throw out the playbook. 60 seconds, go. Okay, the reason why I think you have the whole pivot to video fail is because you just can't take someone or a team that's been programmed and built to write articles and then just say, okay, tomorrow you're gonna start doing videos. It just takes a whole new thinking. Similarly, let's say you are a gawker and you have this like awesome set of uh, own and operated uh, web properties. There's really very little incentive to go where the audiences are, i.e. YouTube. So that's kind of what I mean, that both at the micro level and the macro level, if you're gonna succeed in video, you kind of have to take everything you've learned in publishing text content and just throw it out the window. How do we do for time? Seconds. That was amazing. Uh, John's got me like, nervous now. <laughs> uh, the next one is clutter and attention. Oh, sorry. Space. I want to add one thing oh, on. on wow. Since I'm 30 seconds. No, no. All I'll say is we. Okay. I, I mean, success is relative. All I'll say is we succeeded because we had no plan B. We purposely never said, "Oh, let's now go back to publishing articles," because that would have been the easy thing. And the ROI on articles is so much lower, uh, higher, quicker payback. So you really, really have to go in knowing that's going to be. A different approach. Okay. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> Nine. Clutter and attention span. Yeah, I mean, look, I'd much rather write an article than do a top ten list, even though I've always liked top ten lists. But the thing is, it's more about respecting the fact that your audience is very busy. And nowadays, with the web, and this is even before mobile devices, uh, they just had a short uh, attention span. So. I think people sometimes over uh, think that like everything's got to be a list. The list worked for us because at that point nobody was doing it. People would come up to me saying like, oh, you guys are like the BuzzFeed of lists. And I was like, I think BuzzFeed wants to be the BuzzFeed of lists, but sure, I could live with that. Um, but, but the key thing was, I, I, you know, I loved doing lists when I was even in school, but it was like, what is a way that we could take a lot of information and serve it to a lot of people? I, I mean, props to Beyonce, but like I wouldn't watch a biography on Beyonce, but I would probably click on a top 10 list of Beyonce to see what's the big deal and what her best songs are. So I, the key here is how okay. you can... We're, it's over. Right. Beyonce, we're ending on Beyonce. <laughs> you understand the format now, folks. <laughs> a uh, content is molecular. Okay, what do I mean by that? So basically, um, you have to just bear, bear in mind that there's levers and ingredients. So for us, I always break it down into format. You could have a Q&A, you could have a list, it could be different you know, executions. And then style. Our style, what we did is, I was sick of talking head videos, so we wanted like, the clips to look really good, so we used a lot of clips. Um, and then the categories are you know, food, entertainment, travel. So when you start to experiment, whether it's for a brand or as a publisher, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, meaning maybe you needed to tweak you know, the, the molecule com components. Maybe like the format was wrong, but the style was right, and the vertical needed change. So if you play with those things like a Rubik's Cube, eventually you nail the content formula. Seven, it's about engagement. Yeah, so basically, I mean, that's, uh, engagement's a big word, but like I think, you know, obviously on YouTube, you got the comments, you got the likes, you got the dislikes, and you got the shares. Uh, and I think if you sum it all up, we have some folks from YouTube, that's what gives you I think the P score or the Q score, which is like a big deal on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. So big, I don't even know what letter it is. But, but the point is, like on Facebook, when you are producing content for Facebook, everything on Facebook is about the share, whereas everything on YouTube is about watching, and that's because they were tired of people putting misleading thumbnails, get the click, which was a bad user experience. So if you're programming for YouTube, you gotta get people to sit through and watch the whole video, more, more or less. Awesome. Six, serve your audience. Yeah, so not to sound cheesy, but I actually don't think that successful publishers um, necessarily listen to their audience. I 
I would joke that uh, you know that uh, Ford line. I said if I were to ask people in 2006 what content they wanted, they would have said give us user generated content in HD. So like you have to kind of imagine a type of product or service that even you or your client doesn't know that they necessarily want. And what I mean by that is yeah, you need the confidence to know that sometimes I think I know what the audience wants, but you have the courage to kind of throw the mic over to your audience and hear what they where they want you to go with your editorial strategy. Keeping these short. Five, data lacks content. Okay, so imagine if I came to you and I said it's 75 degrees. It doesn't necessarily tell you the, the, the real like feeling you're gonna have when you're outside, because you don't know if it's sunny, if it's rainy, you don't know if it's foggy. But if I tell you the, the, the weather on your wedding day, you'll know exactly what, what I'm describing, right? So I feel nowadays, people get so caught up. Data is kind of like super important, like you got art and science to succeed in, in uh, publishing. But I feel like a lot of people just use data to basically just make a conclusion that they would have made anyway without it. So I feel like if you want to use data, if it's to make smart decisions, you just have to kind of add a little bit of texture. Because ultimately, content is far more emotional than rational. People, you know, why do you like Beyonce? It's not for any other reason than just the way you feel when you're listening to her song. This has been brought to you by Beyonce. I'm <laughs> loving all these Beyonce <laughs> Keep it coming. Okay, four, repeatability. Yeah, so not, I, I hate it. I wanted to not kill myself, but I, I was tired of going into meetings and everybody saying, let's come up with something that can go viral. Uh, so the point is, whatever strategy you want to build on, it's you've got to make sure that it's something that you could do sustainably, repeat it on and on and on, because content, you know, you could have one hit, that's not really a business, it's here today, gone tomorrow. So what, whatever you want to do, it's, it's, it's got to be something you can do a lot of and over a long period of time because content businesses generally don't scale overnight. They take a very long time. Uh, so make sure it's something that's re repeatable. Three, metadata. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty obvious, just that metadata is the beacon, uh, unlike, say, a, a copyright tool like Content ID that scans your actual video. Search engines are not actually watching every video on every page. That's pretty obvious by now. So what gets videos to be discovered and recovered um, are the metadata. But the thing with metadata is you can't be greedy or stingy. You can't add a bunch of crap just because you think, oh, I'll put Beyonce in this video if it has nothing to do with Beyonce. It really, you, you have to be very, very selective. And I think the more disciplined you are with the metadata, the more successful your content will be discovered. To play the long game. Yeah, I mean, the, that's the whole thing of it's really cool to step up here and be like, oh my god, I don't care about the YouTube algorithm and I do whatever I want. But look, I don't need to know how gravity works necessarily, but I do need to know that it exists because if I jump out this window, I will die, right? So I think the reality with the algorithm is just you can't, you, you don't want to build an editorial strategy around the YouTube algorithm because they will change it to avoid black hat bad habits. But you also don't want to be a slave to it be, so you need to do content that you can do over the long term uh, instead of trying to satisfy subtle short-term changes that they make almost on a daily basis. I think kind of related, one is authenticity. Yeah, so authenticity is like those buzzwords. It sounds very like lovey-dovey. But I think the reason why is because if you don't do something, it's like Plato's principle of specialization. If you don't have a comparative advantage in the one thing that you're going to be focused on, you will be able to then repeat it, like you won't be able to stay in it for the long term. Somebody else will come and they won't like it and they won't sit through the video. So it's kind of like it brings it all together. If you actually produce content on something that you are really passionate about, really well versed, and not just because you're like, hey, I'll make money in it or somebody else is doing it and I want that uh, you know, envy uh, approach, that's the only way that all the other things actually make sense because that's the one thing that you more or less, in theory, know more than anybody else in the world. Well, that was far under 10 minutes, so thank you. You deserve a drink. Do I, do I get to eat now, Tom? <laughs> I want to say thank you. By the way, that's how, that's how you get to 25 million subscribers, 25,000 net new subscribers a day, 100 plus million uniques a month, 12 billion views, and 50 billion, 60 billion minutes of watch time. Well played. And Carrie, thank you so much for thank moderating you, you guys. Thank you for being here, and the bar is open. Thank you.